they live among us, the women who kill. These women who kill, do they kill because they are angry? Because they are in pain? Is it love, need? Or do they kill motivated by greed for money or positions? In this True Crime podcast, we delve into the stories of the women who've been convicted for murder. We feature interviews with experts and individuals close to the case, as well as a detailed examination of the crime. Women Who Kill explores the psychology behind these women's actions and the impact they have had on the victims' families and communities. The accused sentenced to one term of life imprisonment. 32 years imprisonment. Nine years imprisonment. 10 years imprisonment. Life imprisonment. Hi, I'm Larato Manaka. I come to you as a convicted fraudster who was sentenced to eight years behind bars. Join SNL24 and myself as we uncover the hidden truths behind these real life dramas. We take you into these homes and the hearts of the women who kill. On the charge of murder, how do you plead? <laughs> There was no intention, my lord. So you plead not guilty? Too much. In November 2022, the court threw the book at a 33-year-old Nomaswazi Rachel Chabalad in a case that made headlines not only because Rachel had committed the murder, but because of the gruesome circumstances that emerged in court. You. The question I would ask Nomaswazi is why? What did Gogo do to you for you to kill her, burn her, then bury her? I'm very hurt by this. To this day, even when you mention her name, Nomaswazi, I am still in shock. This hurts us all. It was very sad. To think that we used to live with this person. Ugogo would always say that should anything happen to her, it would be Unomaswazi. But because Ugogo was so outspoken, we would always take it lightly and brush it off until this incident happened. We're really not okay. On the 11th of November, 2022, Nomaswazi said doubled over rocking backward and forward in the Gauteng High Court in Johannesburg. Her head was shouted by a hoodie, and she could have been described as a broken human being. But her crimes, eish, no maswas. She confessed to murdering her 62-year-old grandmother, Naomsa Hilda Chabalal, in Mdeni, Soweto, in 2019. But that is only the beginning of a gruesome tale of the murder that reveals the worst of any horror movie. Yes, Namaswazi was crying in court. But I think she was not crying because she was hurt, but she was crying because she had been caught. Now she is thinking about the time she will be spending in jail. I think she thought it would be something that would just pass. In the words of a senior prosecutor, Advocate Chimangazo, Akaza, the accused had an opportunity to reconsider her decision after hitting Gogo with a calabash on her head, leaving her unconscious but alive, but proceeded to strangle Gogo with her bare hands. The fight had apparently broken out when Gogo wanted to physically throw Noma Swazi out of the house. The prosecutor said that, according to the Older Persons Act, murdering an older person was aggravating factor that warranted a life sentence. But now follows a sequence of events so horrible that it is difficult to even speak about. Noma Swazi dragged the body of the gogo into the backyard, poured petrol over her body, and set her alight to disguise the identity of the dead person. In the final act of brutality, Noma Swazi buried the body in a shallow grave and placed a steel cabinet over the mound. 
The gruesome discovery that was made years later, after the house was rented out to a new tenant, who was innocently cleaning the yard, Mdudusi Gubezi, is still haunted by what he saw. And the guys were meant to come and help me clean, but they did not arrive. So I told myself to start cleaning up because at the end of the day, I was the one who lived there. As I was cleaning, there were two metal storage boxes that I tried to move so I could continue cleaning. So I managed to move the boxes to the side so that I could get to the overgrown grass behind them. So as I was cleaning, the dirt kept falling into a ditch. And as, as I tried to level it out, I came across a carpet under the soil. As I continued to struggle with the carpet, I found that there was a metal sheet also buried. So as I was using the shovel to clean up, I managed, I managed to scoop out the carpet and I came across bones. I was scared, but at that moment, I was not sure if there was human bones. So I decided to step out and went to go find the group of guys that were meant to help me clean. When I got there, I said to the guys, I think I found the Goko who used to live there. The guys looked at me and said, stop playing, don't joke like that. And then I told them, let's go. When we got to the yard, I took them straight to, to where the carpet was and I showed them what I had discovered. When we opened the carpet, we came across what looked like a human skull. We stood there for 20 to 30 minutes not knowing what to do. And then eventually, we called the police. They told us to step away and not touch it because it could be a potential crime scene. And when they finally arrived, they said that this could be a missing Gogo. I have not been okay since that day. Even when I close my eyes right now, I can st still see the bones. I could say I was traumatized by what I saw. Although she had committed the murder on the 14th of December, 2019, she went to the Naledi police station on the 19th of December, five days later, to open a case of a missing person. In her defense, Noma Swazi claimed in court that she was under the influence of drugs. I think Noma Swazi thought it would be something that would just pass, that she would just remain a missing person. If only she was remorseful or hurt by what she did, she would have told us. She could have pulled both of us aside and told us that this and that happened. But if the tenant had not discovered the body, we would still be looking for our Gogo. Besides being convicted for murder, Norma Swazi was handed an additional 25 years imprisonment for 24 counts of fraud, theft of the deceased bank and Sasa cards obstructing the administration justice, as well as territory perjury. Norma Swazi first withdrew money using the Sasa cards on the 17th of December, 2019, three days after the murder. She continued to withdraw the money until the 3rd of September, 2020. It was planned, even though she did not have a deadline as to when she was going to do it, but she had always had it in her mind. She always knew that if Ugoko would die, then all her financial problems would be over. She would even spread rumors on the streets about Ugoko that she would harass us so that people started hating her, so that it would seem as if Ugoko treated us badly and that she wasn't taking care of us, even though she had money. She was always after Ugoko's money. She always wanted money. Criminologist Professor Kolofelo Rakubu is an expert on the factors that drive criminals and the impact of crimes in, on the community. She shares with us what she learned about the specific case of Noma Swas and why she committed this most terrible crime and series of crime and did what she did. 
psychologists will come in to say drugs do have a particular impact and a rational thinker knows that and they, they should always have valid reasons. She might have been in, on drugs, but however, uh, one would argue how many individuals are on drugs that are not killing, that are not planning. Was she on drugs on a daily basis to an extent that she was not even remorseful? So more um, analysis will be required, but we're dealing with someone who's going to throw everything and anything that she has to make sure that she does not um, be seen as that um, evil. Because um, no, she, she was under influence, and she had that. When you are when you are using, you are likely to do certain things. So it was purely a uh, greediness. It was her decision to do that. South Africa is among the worst countries for murder, rape, and other violent crimes. The facts prove it. The elderly and the young are especially vulnerable. This series tells the stories and delves into the reasons behind some of the worst crimes in our violent society. The minute as a country we start looking at uh, criminals or crime as a decision, we, 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 know, we, we go in to win it because people will always try to find um, reasons Yes, I, I, I'm not saying there are not reasons behind uh, crime. They are, like traumas and, and neglected abuse or many other factors, rape and so forth, and, and oppression. But cases differ, and behavioral analysis will have to assist here. If now family is saying, no, naturally she has been greedy, she wanted to be seen and be on top and all that, that, that goes with her personality. She's capable. She has been capable. She has been showing signs. Thank you for joining us. Please join us again for SNL's next episode of Women Who Kill.